We'll now look at different ways to represent graphs and graph isomorphisms. So we can represent a graph with what's called an adjacency list. And this specifies the vertices that are adjacent to each vertex in the graph. So for example, here's a very big graph. And I can make this table. And here I see that A is adjacent to B, C, and then I have two edges between A and F, so I'll list F twice. B will be adjacent to A, C, F, G, and H. You can continue. You'll notice D is adjacent to C, H, and itself since it has a loop. And we also have that E is an isolated vertex, so we see its adjacency list is empty. We can also do this with the directed graph. So with a directed graph, we have to have it start at the first point and then go to the second. So here I have that A is adjacent to B and F, but that's it since those are the only edges that leave A. B would be adjacent to C, F, and H. We can also look at D again. D would be adjacent to itself since it leaves D and comes back to D, and also adjacent to H. We can also do an adjacency matrix. So this is the IJ entry of the matrix gives how many edges are between the I and the J vertex. So for example, here's a, a graph with five vertices. So every column will correspond to a vertex, and every row will. One, two, three, four, and we're actually missing row five here. So if I look, there's two edges between one and two, so there is a two in that spot. One edge between one and three, one edge between one and four. I have two edges between two and one, one between two and three, and one between two and five. You can continue. If I try to do five, there are no edges between 5 and 1, 1 edge between 5 and 2, 2 edges between 5 and 3, 1 edge between 5 and 4, and no edge between 5 and 5. So this would be my adjacency matrix. An incidence matrix has 1 in the ij spot, the edge vi, is incident with edge EJ. So here, every row will represent a vertex, and every column will represent an edge. So for example, I have every row that represents my vertices, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The columns represent my edges, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. I can see that 1 is incident to A, B, C, and D. So those have a 1, the rest have zeros. If I look at 3, we are adjacent to C, E, G, and H. So I have a 1 in the C column the E column, and then the G and the H. And you can continue this pattern.